I first came across Siddiqui many years ago. Um, my father brought the story back to me when he'd been working as, as an expat abroad, working, I guess, with the desert moonshiners. Uh, and I found it quite hard. I think he, was, he, he wasn't a natural traveller and he got quite homesick for coming back to Wales. But one of the things that made life a bit easier for him when he was working abroad was to uh, discover Siddiqui and to discover the various uh, styles and uh, incarnations of it. But then, of course, many years later, I met one of the original Desert Moonshiners, Rick Chimblow, and struck, struck up a conversation about what he was then calling his Siddiqui Brown. And the story had a very familiar ring to it. Rick told me it was whiskey. Uh, turned out not to be whiskey, turned out to be rum. Basically, yeah, we started sipping it and drinking it and enjoying it and hearing the story about how he built his own still and how he perfected a recipe over many, many years while he was working in the desert. He says, do you, do you think this is any good? Do you think the spirit's any good? And I said, yeah, I think it's great. I said, but I'll tell you what, I'll take it back to Wales and we'll get one of the, the best noses and best tasters in the world, Dr. Jim Swan, to give it a go. I said, so give me a little sample so I can, I can put it in my suitcase and we'll take it back and let's see what Dr. Swan thinks. Got to sit down in the gym, a quiet moment. We didn't get too many of those. And we tasted brown together for the first time. Jim thought it was great. He loved the nose. He thought it was very clean distillation, nice flavour. And he said, I think this is really attractive, Steve, but I don't think it's whiskey. So, so anyway, he said, look, I think we can, we can improve this a little bit. I think if we, we put it in barrels, if we um, add a little bit of maturation to it, I think it could be better. So off I went and, and, and spoke to Rick and said, look, Dr. Swan thinks this is a great distillation, really like the flavour, was quite impressed with it, which is, which is wonderful. Didn't think it was whiskey. And Rick said, yeah, of course it's whiskey. I said, oh, okay, okay, what do you make it out of? He said, um, well, of course we couldn't get grains in, uh, you know, in the desert, so we were using sugar. So I said, you, you were using sugar? I said, uh, that's not whiskey. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's rum. And he said, really? You think so? I said, well, I know so. I mean, that, that's what it is. But a number of years later, uh, he said to me one day, hey, well, one of my uh, friends from, uh, from the desert, his son has started making Siddiqui properly and actually calling it under the, under the brand name because it's a name that's known to many, many people who've either lived or worked in that part of the world. And, uh, you know, felt that it would be a nice idea to actually consolidate it into a really well-made, nicely presented rum, which tells a story and it's a very authentic story. It's one of the most authentic brand stories I think you could ever come across because it's probably something like 70 years in the making. Siddiqui rum, born of constraint, made for invention. It's a rum for makers. It's about engineering, it's about creativity, it's about being hands-on and making a quality spirit. This is the result. You can sip it neat, you can mix it well, very versatile and really attractive. Cheers.